Thank you, Jair Prasun. My both of uh, the colleagues are my very close friends. Thank you, Dr. Bansi and the team of uh, Diacare. Thank you, RX Events, uh, for giving me this opportunity. And I can see everyone awake, Dr. Kalyan, uh, with very interesting talk you gave. And the final six you hit with Sachin Tendulkar and Shikhar Dhawan. So I'll be talking about whether to start basal insulin. Because as per his talk, there is no scope of basal insulin now. But yes, there are some patients definitely who require basal insulin only and not bolus to start with. So my talk is uh, centered upon achieving the glycemic symmetry with newer basal insulin analog. Of course, the insulin he talked about also contained the same basal insulin, but it was a co-formulation of a short-acting and a long-acting one. My financial disclosure, uh, this has been a NOVO symposium, and uh, obviously uh, the views which I'll be presenting will be unbiased. So I'll also start with a case, 45-year-old gentleman, he is an engineer, diabetic for six years. His HbA1c is 6, is 8.8, .8, and his fasting is 180, post panel is 220. I'll not go into the details of other things because we are going to focus mainly on the glycemic control here. Uh, so you can clearly see that he has high fasting and slightly high PP, but of course if you control the fasting, his post pendle will come down. Let me tell you, Dr. Kalyan, that I had taken the full diet history and every PPBS was almost in the same range. So the uh, dietary difference was not that great so as to influence his post pendial every time. Patient was already on three anti-diabetic agents, metformin 2 gram per day, glimepiride 2 milligram twice a day, and empagliflozin once a day. Now, how many of you will add a fourth drug here? Fourth oral agent. Patient is not on AGI or a DPP4. No one, so no people should be very happy that everyone is agreeing for insulin. So what next? Obviously, this patient requires, because patient is already on three OADs, not controlled, HbA1c is 8.8, .8, that is about 1.8% above what we expect, at least 7%. His fasting is quite high, so insulin is the only choice. But according to ADA, before considering insulin, one should give a thought to GLP-1 analogs because they are also as efficacious or in some trials more efficacious than basal insulin. So GLP-1s should also be given a thought. Unfortunately, in our country, GLP-1 uh, agonists are very expensive still. Though they are very good agents, many of our patients cannot afford and many of them cannot tolerate also. So the obvious choice becomes here if GLP-1 cannot be given, it has to be insulin. The ADA also recommends initiation with basal insulin, but there is a mention about the co-formulation also there, as Dr. Uh, Kalyan already told you. Now, which basal insulin? The choice depends on patient-specific characteristics, cost, and number of other things. So which factors should be considered before prescribing a basal insulin? Efficacy, obviously the first. Risk of hypoglycemia with similar efficacy, glycemic variability, simplicity, and obviously cost. Now, if you look at the data from Degludeg, that is Reciba, you can see that there is a very good HbA1c reduction with the baseline of average of 8, 8.5, or 9. You can see an HbA1c reduction of up to 1.4, 1.6%, which is what we want in this patient. 8.8, .8, we want about 7%. So the efficacy of Degludec, there is no doubt, is very good. You can say at par with the other basal insulins, with some trials showing more efficacy, some trials showing equal degree of efficacy with all the basal insulins. When I mean basal insulins, we are talking about Glargin U100, Glargin U300, and uh, Degludec, where Datamir is also a basal insulin, but less popular because it does not last for 24 hours. And that is why less popularly used, except in the uh, pregnant patients. The second most important thing, or rather I would say the most important thing, is the risk of hypoglycemia with each insulin. And you can see from this slide that compared to U100 glargine, the risk of hypoglycemia 
with Degludeg is much lower. If you look at this BEGIN study, the overall hyperglycemia is 28% less. Nocturnal, which you are more worried about, is 49% less. And severe hypoglycemia requiring assistance or hospitalization is 86% less with Degludeg compared to Glargin U100. If you look at the SWITCH2 study, almost similar data, significant reduction in the degree of hypoglycemia or the risk of hypoglycemia. The DEVOTE, which was a cardiovascular outcome study comparing Degludeg and Glargin, again there also you can see nocturnal and severe hypoglycemia almost 40 to 50 percent less. And the real world evidence, again as Dr. Gangopadhyay told, if you have both the evidences, the real world and the randomized control trial, you are more uh, assured of the overall efficacy and safety. So in the real world also, you can see compared to U100 glargin, that is Lantus, the hypoglycemia risk is 60 to 90 percent lower with insulin deglutec. Very importantly, with higher HB1C, the risk of hypoglycemia may be similar with all the insulins. But as close you go to seven, you can see from this slide that with insulin glargin, if you are closer to 7.5 or 7, the risk of hypoglycemic events increases very, very significantly. Whereas with insulin degludeg, the risk does not increase. And that is the beauty of this insulin that even if you want to uptritrate to reach the goal of fasting or HB1C, you are not increasing the risk of hypoglycemia significantly. Though some risk always remain whatever insulin, whichever insulin you use, but the risk does not increase even if you are nearer to the target. And that is very important. Another analysis that came out from the DEVOT cardiovascular trial was the if the risk of hypoglycemia is high or if the patient is at a high risk of developing hypoglycemia, with Degludec, the cardiovascular events or the MACE events were much less. So in high risk people, especially people with established cardiovascular disease, people with autonomic dysfunction or who had hypoglycemias in the past, they had much lower events compared to U100 glargin. So again, there is a case here that if the patient is high risk and if patient is developing hypoglycemia, he is an established cardiovascular disease patient, Degludec definitely will have an age over U100 glargin for this particular candidate. Let us talk about the CONCLUDE study, and it was a randomized controlled trial in insulin experienced patients, not insulin naive patients. And let us look at the hypoglycemia results in that. In the maintenance period, overall and the nocturnal symptomatic hypoglycemias, the overall hypoglycemias were not less, but the nocturnal symptomatic, as I told, it is very, very important, and the severe hypoglycemias were much less with Degludec compared to U300 glargin. Here the comparison is with U300 glargin. And during the total treatment period, again, there was a statistical advantage with Degludec compared to U300 glargin for overall symptomatic hypoglycemias, nocturnal symptomatic hypoglycemias, as well as for the severe hypoglycemias. So compared to U300 glargin also, Degludec has shown superior or rather uh, better efficacy as far as the hypoglycemia is concerned. This is a real world study and the hypoglycemia results in the real world study comparing Degludec with U300 glargin. There also you can see that the rate of hypoglycemia as well as the change in proportion with hypoglycemia both were significantly lower with insulin Degludec compared to U300 glargin. Everyone talks about the glycemic variability these days. I'm not going to talk a lot about that because uh, the subsequent talk is on the glycemic variability with insulin degludec compared to the other insulin, the real world evidence. But if you look at the variability pharmacology wise, you can see that the area under the curve and the uh, glucose insulin, so these are all CLAM studies. If you look at this, degludec delivers equal amount of uh, insulin every six hours. So whether it's in the first six hours, six to 12 hours, 12 to 18 hours, or 18 to 24 hours, there's hardly any difference, 23, 28, 26, 23%.
whereas with U100 GLAR gene, you can see that 31 plus 29, that is 60 percent of the efficacy is within first 12 hours. In the subsequent 12 hours, the efficacy is only 40 percent. And that is the reason why U100 is associated with more variability compared to Daglutec insulin. And that is not much different with U300 glargin also. You can see with U300 glargin also, first 12 hours, the 55 percent efficacy is there. Subsequent 12 hours, it is only 45 percent. Whereas with Degludeg, all these 24 hours, the efficacy remains same. Again, speaks for its low variability in the clinical practice. This is almost repetition of the same that insulin Degludeg, you can see like Rahul Dravid, 50-60 runs in every match. And this is like Virendra Sehwag, 200 in one match, zero in another match. And same thing for the insulin glargin 300 also. Why glycemic variability is more important? Because it is also associated with micro as well as macrovascular complications. Of course, we need larger studies to prove that. But this study, which was a randomized control trial, where superiority of Degludec was confirmed comparing it with U100 glargin. You can see that the estimated treatment difference was significant 20.6 minutes per day in favor of Degludec compared to U100 glargin. Both level 1 hypoglycemia that is below 70 and level 2 hypoglycemia that is below 54 were less in the Degludec group compared to the glargin group and the overall hypoglycemia rate was also less. This study which was recently discussed at ATTD Barcelona just a few months back, the in-range study where the patients were randomized to U300 glargin or Degludec plus standard of care and there also you can see that Degludec versus U300 glargin, the time in range was 44 minutes more time above range was 44.9 minutes less and HB1C was also slightly less. Though every criteria did not meet the statistically significant levels, but still there was a trend towards benefit with insulin degludec compared to insulin glargin 300. Finally, the simplicity. And this is very important. We know that all the basal insulins are simple to initiate because you do not have to do much modification in the oral antidiabetic agents. They can be given at any time of the day. Glargin U100 you need to give at fixed time of the day because the efficacy does not last for more than 24 hours. Actually it falls off short of 24 hours. But you can give it at any time. You can give it in the morning also. You can give it in the night also. U300 you have 3 hours flexibility. Whereas with Degludeg, you have about 8, 10 to 12 hours of flexibility because the efficacy lasts for almost 36 to 42 hours. And that is why it is easier to titrate also. And in a person who has erratic lifestyle, this has an advantage because you can always tailor the dose based upon the patient meal timings or if he is traveling internationally, it will be even more advantageous. Because of less variability, you will also require less monitoring and that may also translate into cost benefits. Though initial cost may appear high, but if the risk of hypoglycemia is lower, the monitoring requirement is lower, ultimately you are going to save the money and not going to spend more money. The flexible timing, the trial have been, uh, trials have been done with that whether you give it in the morning, next day you give it in the evening. Of course, we do not suggest this in the practice, but even if the patient is doing this with good understanding about his disease and lifestyle, this can also be practiced uh, in a given patient. Whether this insulin is more adherent? Well, this study, the confirmed study showed that the treatment discontinuation rate was lower with insulin Degludec compared to Glargin U300. The exact reason behind this is not known at present, but this was the result which was there from the confirmed study that glargin 300 was associated with more discontinuation compared to Deglutec. I already told you that the time flexibility is there and the variability is less, so the strip requirement will be less. Moreover, with glargin U100, you will require about 10% lower dose. 
Generally, the experience and the studies suggest that if you are giving large in 30 units, the requirement of degludeg would be about 25 units and the requirement of the U300 glargin would be about 35 to 40 units. So 10% more dose will be required compared to U100 glargin for U300 and 10% less dose for insulin degludeg. That also is in a way cost saving. Finally, coming back to this case, everything went well. Patient was started with 10 units of degludeg. And this is generally what we practice. We do not start according to the weight of the patient. And for degludec, this is the guideline recommendation also. Start with just 10 units in an adult. Monitor the fasting values and up titrate the dose by 2 to 4 units based upon the fasting. And in this patient, you can see that with 16 units, finally the HbA1c from 8.8 .8 within 3 months came down to 7.4 without any episode of hypoglycemia. Oral medications were continued. Obviously, when you start insulin, we need to cut down on the dose of the glimepiride that we generally do from 4 to 2 milligram, and that was done here. Other OADs, including metformin and empagliflozin, was continued. Insulin was uptitrated to 16 units from 10, fasting of 112, postprandial 174, and everything went well. HB1C also came down, and very happily, no episodes of hypoglycemia. So I would like to stop here and uh, uh, the subsequent presentation will be uh, based upon the case discussion. Thank you very much for your very kind audience.